Hi, this is Mr. Reese, and this video is going to go over isosceles and equilateral triangles. We're just simply going to go over the concept. We're not going to be exploring proofs. So how about we start off with what isosceles and equilateral triangles are. An isosceles triangle is a triangle that has two congruent sides. Oftentimes they are marked like this, or a measurement will be written in which the measurement for one side is identical to the measurement to the other side. Typically, if two sides are marked, that means those are the ones that are congruent or equal length. The third one, if it's not marked, that means it's not the same length as the other two. Equilateral triangle is when all three sides are congruent. And here you can see that all three sides are marked. I want you to note that with an equilateral triangle, it can only be drawn one way. Notice that each of the angles here are acute. The key concept here is the number of congruent sides. The number of congruent sides will always tell us how many congruent angles we have. So for an isosceles triangle, if you have two congruent sides, that also means you have two congruent angles. Whereas for an equilateral triangle, three congruent sides means that all three angles are congruent. So let's explore a little bit about isosceles triangles. There are two congruent angles, Let's try to explore and figure out exactly which two. Here you're looking at an isosceles triangle. Two sides are marked congruent. This is simply a larger version of the one you just saw earlier. The main thing about an isosceles triangle is that you want to identify the base. The base is the side that is not congruent to the other two. In this case, it's the bottom. Don't always think of the base as the bottom side. It's always going to be the one side that is not congruent or equal length to the other two sides. This is key because that's how you identify the congruent angles. You will notice that in this case, the base stretches from this point to the one on the right hand side. Because of that, these two vertices here are the ones we focus on because those are the two angles that are congruent. Those are referred to as the base angles. Thus, if you are working within a proof, or if you are asked to determine how you know these two angles are congruent, you would simply state the base angles are congruent in an isosceles triangle. Just by identifying the base, you can always figure out which two angles are congruent. There is also another thing to examine. Note that the angles that are congruent are opposite the sides that are congruent. Like if you were to draw an arrow out from this angle here, it would go to this side. Same here on the right hand side. If you draw an arrow out, it will go to this side. The congruent sides are always opposite the congruent angles. Thus again, if you were given two sides that were congruent and you were asked to determine why angle A is congruent to angle C, it is because the base angles of an isosceles triangle are congruent. Again, note, this is the base here. That's the one side that's not congruent to the other two. The base stretches from this to this. In other words, from A to C, therefore those are your congruent angles. Again, note that these equal angles are opposite these equal sides. This also works in reverse. Like if you have two congruent angles, why does DE equal to EF? It's the same thing, but only in reverse. Note that this side here connects these two equal angles. So that's our base in this case. Thus, if, since you know this is the base, that means the other two have to be the same length. Now, if you were doing a proof, your reason for that would be the base angles thing again, only it's referred to as the converse, and that is that the opposite sides of congruent angles are congruent. Again, note that these angles opposite would give you the congruent sides. Okay, let's do an example. Let's say you are given something like this, solve for x. Hopefully you recognize that this side is the base. And because of that, 
we know that the base angles are congruent. Thus, if this is 75 degrees, so is this angle here on the right. Knowing this allows us to finally write an equation for this. Since you know that the three angles of a triangle total 180 degrees, just add up all your angles. So we write x plus 75 plus 75 equals 180. There's your reason, by the way, so if your instructor requires you to write it, this is what you would put. Just go ahead and collect your like terms here, 75 and 75. And then to solve for x, just minus 150 from both sides. So there we are. Let's do one more. Let's solve for x again, but this time x is a side, it's part of a side length here, it's not part of an angle. You are given two equal angles though, so what we're going to do is we're going to use the same idea, only this time we're going to use the converse of the base angles, idea, uh, base angles theorem. The converse basically says that if you already know that the base angles are congruent, that means that the sides opposite are going to be congruent. Keep in mind which one's the base. That side is. So therefore, we know that the other two sides are congruent. Now, if you're having trouble with the base by now, again, you can just simply draw an arrow out from each angle, and that'll tell you which two sides are congruent. Okay, so we can go ahead and mark this as 12 as well. Since our focus here is on all the sides, we're going to need the perimeter here to set up the problem just like we did before. In the last example, we totaled all the angles and set it equal to 180 degrees because that's the sum for a triangle. We don't use 180 degrees here in this case because x is not part of an angle. So instead we'll total everything but instead set to the perimeter. So that's 2x plus 1 plus 12 plus 12 equals 33. And that's what you're seeing over here on the right hand side. Now we can go ahead and solve this like you would do in a normal algebra problem. Collect all these like terms. And from here, just your normal algebra takes over. So track 25 from both sides. Since you only have one term with a variable, we don't mess with that. And then to finish off, we divide by 2. And that completes that problem. Now if you were asked to determine the length of this particular side, then you would take the 4 and then plug it in and get 2 times 4 plus 1, which is 9. So I say, Who understood? Yeah, understood the plans. Heard of it and put it now let's explore equilateral triangles. For equilateral triangles, the angles, again, note that they are opposite the congruent sides. We've been saying that before. Since all three sides are congruent, that means that all three angles are congruent. So consider, if all the angles total 180 degrees, and yet all three angles are congruent, that should tell you how much each angle measures. That's 60 degrees. Simply take 180 degrees, which is the total, and divide by 3 to get what each one is. So for equilateral triangles, they're also equiangular, and therefore you should know that each of the angles are always are going to be 60 degrees, no matter how big or small the triangle is. That's why before I stated that the equilateral triangle can only be drawn one way. Okay, let's do an example here. Let's say you were to solve for x. This is an equilateral triangle. We know this because each of the three sides are marked. And one of the angles is given as 7x plus 4. Again, note that all three angles are congruent and that all of them have an angle measuring 60 degrees. So you can do this in one of two ways. You can write in 7 plus, 7x plus 4 for the other two angles and then total them up equal to 180 degrees. Or you can take this lone angle and just simply set it equal to 60 degrees since you know that each of the angles are 60 degrees anyway. And that's how we will approach this one. 7x plus 4 is equal to 60. By the way, the other way is okay. You'll still get the same answer. It's just that all your values will be slightly bigger. From here, it's just algebra, minus 4 from both sides, and then divide by 7. So 8's your answer. Okay, let's do one last example. Let's say we don't have a figure in this case. You're just simply told that you have a triangle, 
ABC is equilateral, and then you're given angle B. Measure of angle B is 13x plus 8. So knowing that, what is the value of x? We would approach this the same way. Again, remember that each of the angles in an equilateral triangle amount to 60 degrees. Since you know that angle B is also 60 degrees and yet you're given this quantity for it, just simply set that quantity equal to 60 degrees. And then from there you're just basically doing algebra. Subtract 8, then divide 13. And that's all there is to it.